If you run slot cars, then you know, or at least you should know, that the single biggest performance improvement is achieved by truing your tires. There is the quick method of tuning your tires while on the car, and in most cases, this is totally sufficient. However, there are situations where a dedicated tire truing machine is the more appropriate tool for the job, but they are pricey. I designed and built this one for my slot cars, and it didn't cost a lot. Stick around, I'll show you the design, construction, operation, plus provide all the information you'll need if you would like to build your own. Here's all the components required to assemble this tire truing machine. Everything over here, all these plastic parts, these were designed in CAD and then printed on a 3D printer. And I have an array of colors here, not to be fancy or anything, but just so that it's easier to differentiate between the different components as I'm assembling it here for the demo. And then over here is all the hardware that uh, it's either salvaged, stuff I had lying around, or purchased. And I'll go through and give some of the specifications on these and their purpose as I'm going through the assembly. This is the base of the unit, obviously, that uh, just about all the components are going to attach to. And the first thing we're going to put in, though, is this machine screw up here through the bottom. And uh, this is a, uh, a 632 by 2 inch machine screw with the matching hex nut. And uh, we're putting this on first. Uh, this is not my first revision of this. And we put this on first because this little post behind it here is for us to hold a spring. And it's pretty easy to bump that, uh, that post accidentally and break it off. And so we're putting this in first. It'll act like to uh, protect it to some degree so that we don't accidentally break it off. And what I'll probably do in a future revision is just make that separately where it's printed separately and just kind of stick it down into a hole. And that way if it breaks off, you can easily replace that without having to glue it or reprint an entire base. Next component to install is the motor. And this is a 550 size 12 volt DC motor. And I pulled this out of a Power Wheels ride-on toy that I happen to have a, a few of these motors and gearboxes lying around from tinkering and so forth. But you can still find these around all over. As a matter of fact, you can still get them brand new on Amazon. I'll leave a link if, uh, in the description for that as well. And now if you do pull this out of a Power Wheels though, you're not going to be able to use the stock mounting screws. They're going to be way too long. And so these are they're 440 by, I think, 1 8 inch cap head screws. I think the equivalent is an M3 by 5, which will also work. I have a mix of metric and imperial in here because, like I said, I just used a lot of stuff I just had lying around. The next component to go in is this reduction pulley. Now, this machine runs belt driven basically and that's what these O-rings for is we're using these as drive belts. Now this motor spins at about 30,000 RPM at 12 volts and even though I'm using it at 6 volts uh, that's still pretty fast and so if your tire speed on this end is too fast it can actually distort the tires from the centrifugal force and you can build up heat pretty quickly too so I'm reducing the speed to half and at the same time doubling the torque which is not a bad thing and so this pulley will ride on an axle here and then that axle will ride on these bearings and those bearings are going to go into the stanchions right here and I believe if I remember correctly these are one quarter by one half by three sixteenths three sixteenths flanged bearings uh, and again, I will put all the information details in the description for all the hardware uh, as well as the STL files for 3D printing. And uh, 
first thing after we install the axle is to install the spacer and then that way uh, this is not riding against the plastic here and uh, it's actually riding on the inner race of the bearing which is what we want because when we're running we have some unneeded friction on this uh, the plastic can get pretty hot and actually melt so that's why we want to be sure we don't have anything rubbing that's not supposed to be rubbing now this is the by far the most difficult part about this operation is just getting the spacer in here because it is keyed you know we've got a a notch in the axle and a tooth on the spacer and also on the axle or on the pulley because we want this to spin the axle we don't want this spinning on the axle again we're going to get some heat and start melting things and then these two drive pulleys need to go on before we put this pulley in here otherwise we won't be able to get them on and again so yeah, i don't know if you can see that on the camera that's got the little tooth in there that will align with the notch on the axle Right, and then now our idler or our reduction pulley is in place. Next, engage the motor to the reduction pulley. And this motor has a pinion that's pressed onto the shaft. My original design just had this driven by directly by this, you know, via a gear. Uh, but again, it was getting too hot, too much friction. And so I changed it over to pulley by making this adapter here and that goes on over that pinion and turns it into a pulley instead of a gear and then the smaller of these o-rings i think this is a one and three quarter by five sixteenths o-ring and that slips on there and now this can move slide back and forth but it's not going to fall off because this right here will essentially keep it aligned so yeah motor now hooked up to the reduction pulley now for what I call the swing arm and this part here holds the axle of the car and then on this end it pivots on a hinge pin and that allows it to move up and down before that though we have to put the spring on and this spring I just found the spring in a bin of parts or whatever but I'm pretty sure this is out of a ballpoint pen and if you can't find a ballpoint pen or spring like that you can get pretty much that exact thing at a hardware store and then we'll take our swing arm make sure that we get our belt looped through here and then run this down over the adjustment screw and that support pin and then at our hinge pin And then the, now some people would call this a thumb screw. It's a knurled nut is what it is. And that will again go down. And of course, that size has to be the same as whatever you use for that machine screw. In this case, it's the 632. And then now you can see as we turn this up, go back and forth or in and out, it raises and lowers the swing arm where that axle is going to be. This is the axle pulley and this is what we're going to add uh, to put on the axle so that we have a way to turn it while it's in the machine. And in order to clamp this on the axle we're going to use these two either 440 or M3 grub screws. And there's two of them and they're going to go in here and another one in this direction and that way we get equal clamping force on each side of the axle and also we don't want the axle to slip and unlike say a uh, output shaft of a, of a motor that might have a flat on it where we can engage the flat the axles you know the cars do not have that and so they're going to have a tendency to slip unless you clamp them really hard but this is plastic and we don't want to clamp this really hard it'll distort so Having two will 
first of all ensure that it stays centered properly but also we get a little bit more contact area on these grub screws to make sure that uh, it doesn't slip without having to, to over tighten it. The final component is the sanding block. This is also 3D printed and on this one I've already added the abrasive to this. I believe this is 220 grit. Just cut the sandpaper and adhere it. I use some 3M adhesive and the nice thing about having you know, these parts 3D printed is you can print up multiple blocks and add different grits if you like also. Alright, let's get this baby fired up and see how she does. And I have the perfect candidate for that, which is this Firebird here. And the tires are completely shot. And you can't get the stock tires from Carrera anymore for this car. And uh, the aftermarket replacements aren't exactly an exact fit. They're too tall, so we have to take off a lot of material. And that's why this is a perfect candidate for uh, the tire chewing machine. And also look at the fronts uh, those need to be replaced with the same tires that are a little bit too tall and therefore when you're going to need to to true down the fronts and then that way the ride height is correct and we don't have this thing de-sliding unnecessarily because it's riding too high We have our new tires on the on the axle now or the wheels and you can see yeah they're all nice and shiny like they've just been armor all uh, but again these tires are not exact fit we just stretch them quite a bit to get them on the wheel and also you can see that there's quite a bit of crown on these tires your contact patch is quite minimal and so we need to grind these down to make the profile flat to give us maximum contact with the track. Secure the pulley to the axle now. Again, uh, this is plastic we're dealing with and so we can't exactly go ahead and just crank this thing down as hard as we can because we'll start to distort the plastic. Okay, that's actually tell when I'm Okay, there it is. It's starting to engage. Okay, so we got that on there, but let's see. Okay, yeah, it's not slipping. Okay, then there's a, it's a fine line between getting this to grip well on here and over tightening it, but that looks pretty good. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and this on the machine and now these bushings that are on the axle those are going to engage at the end of this swing arm just uh, snap right in okay To power the machine, I'm using this old battery charger set to 6 volts. Whatever power supply you end up using, be sure it puts out at least 4 amps. This operation does draw a decent amount of current. Let's go ahead and clamp this on and it will start running. You can see it's pulling about 2 amps right now. Just to run this like this. Okay. So. So you can see that that, uh, that profile is starting to flatten out. So if you just keep turning this down, so you can see how much amps that's pulling as soon as we turn this down a little bit. And the amps go up so you can tell. Okay. 
diameter measures 21.9, I need to get down to about 21.6, so I'm almost there. Like I said in the beginning, especially if running stock tires, the basic quick tune method with the tires on the car is plenty sufficient most of the time because you're not going to be removing that much material. But if you have to shave off a lot of rubber, like in our example where we're basically resizing a tire, that method is going to take forever, and that's if you don't burn something out first. Thus, the tire truer is the way to go in such scenarios. I designed this to fit Carrera 32nd and 24 scale cars. Here's how the 124 axle works. You see here there's clearance for that large spur gear. The bushings fit even though the axle diameter is a bit larger than the 32nd scale. However, that does require a different clamp on axle pulley. Now I don't know if this would work with other brands like Scale Electric or Polycar. It would depend on what clearance you have within this distance and also the diameter of the axle and the bushings. If someone wants to send me a Scale Electric car, preferably the IROC Camaro Z28, I'll gladly try the fitment. Here's a list of parts and their cost. Now I designed this to use the hardware I already had, so I only had to purchase a few things and my total cost was under $5, and that includes the approximate $2.50 for the printer filament that I used. You've probably got some of these items lying around already, but even if you had to buy everything on this list, the total cost would still be under $40. This doesn't include the sandpaper or the power supply, as I'm assuming everybody's got sandpaper, and at the very least, a battery charger. Most items you could get in just one trip to your local hardware store, the motor and bearings are available on Amazon. Check the description for those links and also a full parts list. Also, there's a link to our website where you can download the 3D print files. I put a ton of design time into this, printing, testing, redesign, reprinting. So if you do build one of these, let me know how it goes. I'd really appreciate the feedback. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe if not already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.